drawbacks in Nippon, the learning machine. Behind the explanations for Japan's post-war rise, her rapid take-up of new technology, her disciplined workforce, there is one common factor. Japan's high level of education and the habits and attitudes learned in school have been crucial to her economic success. Each year, young Japanese race to read the exam results, which will tell them if they've made it to the most prestigious university in the country, Tokyo. This is the high ground of Japanese education. These students are almost guaranteed top jobs in government and business. They've just passed the most important exams in their lives. But in Japan, educational success is not just a matter for individuals. Education has been given the highest national priority for over 120 years. The founders of modern Japan believed that to catch up with the West industrially, they had first to build an efficient school system. Today, the Ministry of Education, the Mombusho, still runs the schools with a tight central grip. From Tokyo, it controls the detail of school life for 21 million children, the size of their desks and classrooms, the textbooks they use, what they study, and for how long. Their guidelines are passed down through local offices to produce the most standardized and quality controlled mass school system in the world. With its extraordinary achievements and great pressures, it explains much about modern Japan. Osaka, the commercial and industrial hub of Western Japan. This is how education works for ordinary children in Japan's second city. The long educational march begins for six-year-olds. They'll go to elementary school until they're 12, then junior high school. In southern Osaka, they're on their way to Gojo Elementary. Wherever they start school, small Japanese will be taught the same basic skills, the same discipline, by the same teaching methods. Now let's think about the meaning of this character. The first discipline is mastering their own language. Japanese uses thousands of characters. Write the character for big. Stroke up at a slant. Each character has to be drawn in precisely the correct manner. That's too high on the page. It's a little too thick. You should have started here and brought this stroke down through the center at 45 degrees. From now until they're 15, they'll do a set number of new characters each week, each month, each year, until they've learned the basic 2,000 needed to make sense of a newspaper. Next to Japanese, they spend most time on arithmetic. The teaching is traditional, with repetitive drilling in multiplication tables. 
The emphasis on maths will put them well ahead of European and American children by the time they're 18. At elementary school, children start learning to be good Japanese. Every day, in the same ritual throughout Japan, children take on lunch duty. Like most school activities, it's organized in small groups who take it in turn. Serving lunch to their classmates teaches them how to get organized and have concern for others. Their learning habits and behavior intended to last them for life. Much of this social training is put across indirectly, but moral education is also taught formally as part of the curriculum. Lessons are drawn from a simple story. ユミコさんは元気よく、はいと答えました。ユミコさんは練習をしてきていません。それでどうぞ私のグループには当たりませんようにとビクビクしていました。で、ここへ来てね。これがユミコさんやと思うって言って。僕はこれがユミコさんだ
There's no exam to get in. Though compulsory school will end at 15, almost every child in Japan now stays on at school to 18. Most school principals are men and in their 50s, like Mr. Yamazoe. There are those who do nothing but hold the title of monitor. That's very sad. Once you become a monitor, think hard about what you can do for others and then do it. I was looking recently at an opinion poll of elementary and junior high school children in the Tokyo area. One of the questions was, are the rules in your school strict? Would you like to see them relaxed? The result showed that as children got older, they wanted the rules to be more relaxed and more responsibility to be given to them. Well, now you have become junior high school students. I want you not just to do whatever your teachers and parents say. Try to think for yourselves what you should be doing and then do it. Try to make your time at this school rich and fulfilling. Good morning, everyone. Does anyone know where Sugimoto is? He's probably still in bed again. Throughout junior high school, and especially for third years like Keiko, the overriding concern is where are they going next? Entrance to senior high school is getting tougher and more competitive. Don't listen if your older brothers and sisters tell you it was easy for them. Because things are very different from last year. And it looks as if things will be even more competitive next year. Most children are competing to get into a good senior high school, which in turn is the only way to a good university and a good job. In the nationally imposed curriculum, the key subjects are Japanese, science and mathematics. Classes are large. The national average is around 40. Come on, stop chattering. CB is parallel with AD, like the edges of a strip of paper. And what qualities do parallel lines have? Can you remember what is peculiar to parallel lines? They have alternate angles, interior angles, and corresponding angles. This isn't the fast track. There's no streaming. All children, the bright and the less bright, study together. All do algebra and geometry and have to take exams in them. So which of these are alternate angles? Why are these angles equal? The teaching method is formal, almost lecture-like, with constant drilling and testing. The reason is clear, because CD is a straight line. Write it down. Copying out helps you to remember. Children with a wide range of abilities manage to work alongside each other on the same problems. But this brings a special challenge to the teacher. We want every child to do well, so we put a lot of effort into teaching the basics. But because we also want to stretch them, we give them some very difficult problems. And so the ones who are not good at maths don't lose out. We get them to study in pairs to work it out together.
After class, in the 10 minute break, teachers try to give individual help if the message still isn't getting through. P is a third of T squared. And over here, this is T on the X axis. So the Y axis is T squared times 6. So here you have 2 plus 6, which works out at 6 times this, which is one third of that. Now you have a go. In science, again, there's no streaming. All Japanese children have to cover the same ground together in large classes. Each school is in step with all the others, reaching the same point in the curriculum at the same time. So these two systems work in exactly the same way. The coil itself becomes a magnet when current passes through it. Each loop adds to the strength of the magnetic field. The power comes from the interaction of the two magnetic fields. It starts to spin according to Fleming's left hand rule. So now we're going to construct a simple motor to establish the principles behind its workings. After the theory comes the practical exercise. Keiko doesn't like science, but it's one of the five tested subjects she has to pass in. The real strength of the system is the breadth of knowledge these kids receive. Japan is an industrial society, and this breadth of knowledge, which they acquire at junior and senior high school, will be very useful to them once they join a company, whatever kind of work they do. We're not educating outstanding geniuses, but the average level of knowledge and academic ability in Japan today is really quite high. Most people grasp what you're talking about on pretty well any subject, and almost nobody is completely in the dark. Twelve forty. When the broadcasting club starts to play requests, it's time for a forty five minute lunch break. Japan is such a stable, homogeneous society that the schools are saved from many of the pressures that Western schools have to deal with. They don't have to bring different ethnic or racial groups together. There are no great disparities in their parents' incomes. Classes eat together and form a tight social unit. Japanese language is taught as a visual art form, as well as for literature and communication. Every child studies calligraphy. Each stroke must be drawn in the proper order, with up to 24 strokes in some characters. Gentle, then hard. Gentle, then hard. Then jump. Then up to the top. Gentle, then hard then stop. Children must learn to imitate faithfully and accurately and repeat the same movements endlessly. It's a training in precision and manual control. In other Japanese classes, the long process of getting to the level of basic literacy in one of the most complex languages in the world continues. 
By the time they'd left elementary school, they'd learned to read and write 1,000 characters. In the three years of junior high school, there are another thousand to go. In a class exercise, they've all read a book written by a foreign visitor to Japan in the 19th century. They'll now discuss it. The Japanese and Germans have certain merits in common. What did the text say they were? They are both very serious, industrious and studious. <coughs> and what are the weak points of the Japanese and Germans? To put it simply, they have no sense of humour, an insufficiently developed sense of humour, a poor sense of humour. There's little room for individual interpretation. In this way, humour, draw a line under that bit, is recognising your own limitations. Humour springs from objective introspection. A foreign language is compulsory. It's almost always English. Uh -huh. uh, stand up, class. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. We sit, sit down. Do you yes. remember Simon says? Simon yes. says? No? Simon says. <laughs> Under a Ministry of Education scheme, Native English speakers like Beverly Taylor from Gloucestershire have been imported to work in the schools as assistants to Japanese teachers. Uh, I want to say stand up. I want to say touch your head. I want to say touch your shoulders. Touch your knees. I want to say touch your knees. I want to say touch your shoulders. Touch your head. Oh. Beverly visits three schools in Osaka and comes to Kozu twice a week. <laughs> You're very good at this. Okay, Simon says play the violin. Simon says play the guitar. Simon says play the guitar. Play the guitar. That's a guitar. <laughs> good, good. Everyone uh, understood uh, what is command. So uh, Simon says, sit down, everyone. Okay. Uh, can you can you say wonderful? Wonderful. <laughs> With, you are very excited. Oh. Oh. Excited. Oh. Good. Oh, wonderful. Good. Actually, speaking the language takes a small part of the class time. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Don't fall in, Kenji. Don't fall in, Kenji. Most English lessons are directed to exams with a strong emphasis on grammar. Three thirty p.m. The end of official school work. Another daily routine, which combines economy with character building. At the end of every day, in every state school in Japan, the cleaning is done by the children themselves. It's part of a continuing effort to put across a set of public values and encourage frugality, self-help, and working as a group.
The school stays open at the end of the afternoon for sport and other activities. Children are organised into clubs. There's the brass band club, the athletics club, the basketball club and so on. Belonging to the club and participating matter as much as the activity itself. Each club starts with a lengthy practice session. At COZO, these voluntary activities are in fact compulsory. <laughs> 6 p.m. in the staff room. Teaching is a much respected profession, better paid than the police or the armed services. Competition for jobs is intense. There are five times as many applicants as there are teaching posts. Many teachers spend around 10 hours a day at school. But the teacher's burden is light compared with the children's. As night falls, the second unofficial side of the Japanese educational machine is just starting up in cities across Japan. Keiko is on her way to an institution that plays a major part in children's lives, the Juku. Jukus are the cramming schools Japanese children go to to make sure they can pass the exams they need. They're privately run, highly profitable businesses. Jukus supplement the unstreamed egalitarian teaching of the schools with an even more exam-focused concentration on the facts. Tonight, it's a two-hour class on the First World War and more. He was assassinated at Sarajevo on June the 28th, 1914. That's called the Sarajevo incident and was one of the causes of the First World War. Okay, the Crown Prince of Austria was assassinated by a young Serbian activist and Austria declared war on Serbia and that was how the First World War began. In the last year of junior high school, over half the 15-year-olds in Japan, more in cities like Osaka and Tokyo, attend Juku. It's the crucial year because the 15 plus, the senior high school entrance exams, affect every child's future. Then a German U-boat sank the Lusitania and over a hundred American citizens were drowned and so the tide of American opinion went against Germany so they joined the Allies and ended the war in 1917. Okay, the order in which the Russian Revolution occurred. There were the March and November revolutions, okay. And then the war ended and then the peace treaty was discussed. And where was it discussed? Talks were held in Paris, okay? And this was the Treaty of Versailles. In 1920 the League of Nations was formed, okay? Have you all understood up till now? It's a major family expense, an average of 1,500 pounds a year. So long as other children are going, parents feel they have to send theirs. A short break for a takeaway supper. School isn't streamed, but the Dukus certainly are. There are courses for the children who are behind, for the average, and for the very cleverest in Mr. Maida's class. Just to improve concentration, he takes the register during a speeded up maths test. How long have we got, sir? I know it says 25 minutes, but you're doing it in 20, OK? The maths they're doing is around British A-level standard. The commitment from mothers needs to be just as great. In a coffee bar around the corner, Mrs. Psyche waits for her son to finish at 9.30 and then drives him the hour's journey back home. <laughs> Next, 12, then 18, then 20. 10 is the circumference. 
Now this is six times one, six times two, six times three, and so on, up to six times ten minus one. Right, have a go at working that out. Can you get it? It says always a battlefield, because we're always on the battlefield, always fighting against something. We must never slacken. We must always work hard and fight. At 10 p.m., it's time for Keiko to head home. She stays this late six nights a week, and at her stage, there's nothing particularly unusual about it. She still has to do her homework for school and juku. She'll go to bed about one. There's a bravado exhortation which children use. Pass with four, fail with five, referring to hours of sleep. We have a phrase, examination hell, which we use in Japan. It's existed for quite a long time. The problem starts in elementary school, but it causes most concern at junior high school, where things are even more intense than at senior high. That's the trend in Japan. It's all juku, juku, juku. I feel it's terribly hard for them. I want most of all for my child to be brought up as a well-rounded human being. But children these days have to give up cultivating their characters or they won't get through the exams. And I think that's a big worry for Japan. Every morning, Mr. Asano, the deputy headmaster, opens up Kozo Junior High at 7.15. All children must follow detailed regulations on appearance, dress, and punctuality. The lifestyle committee waits outside the school each morning. And teachers conduct their own checks too. If you're late or break a rule, it's recorded by the Lifestyle Committee, and children's personal rule books are handed in for noting. Too many entries, and they're called in for a talking to. Much of the discipline is orchestrated through peer group pressure. Each committee has a different concern. Make sure you're wearing your caps and badges properly and follow the rules about what you wear under your uniforms, even though it can't be seen. So please all of you stop wearing your sports gear under your uniforms. And boys, make sure your buttons and hooks are done up properly. This is a message from the deportment committee. In Osaka, Kozu isn't thought of as a particularly tough or authoritarian school, but they like things done by the regulations. Right, if you've kept to the rules, sit down. Hairstyles now, uniform later. Teachers, please take names and tell them off afterwards. There are a lot of you who haven't got the proper haircut. Not good enough, is it? Right, all of you sit down. In some schools, boys still have their heads close shaven and have to wear uniforms on Sundays. Right. Who hasn't got their rule book? Stand up if you haven't got your rule book. Stand up if your braids are not fixed on properly, or if you haven't got your badge. 
You're a really sloppy lot, aren't you? Pull yourselves together. Right, all stand up. I want you to admit your own faults to each other and make the effort to correct them together. It's no good unless you make the effort yourselves, right? With this degree of control, problems of violence or vandalism hardly exist by Western standards. But with all the emphasis on conformity, children who stand out are sometimes bullied, and for years the Japanese were worried by the suicide rate in schools. It's fallen fast over the past 20 years and is now lower for this age group than in the United States or Britain. Exams and tests set the pace in Japanese schools. They're trained to answer questions quickly under pressure of time. Within ordinary classwork, there are constant tests. There are regular national exams set by the ministry and school ability tests. But the climax is the senior high school entrance exam at the end of the third year. It's a carefully calibrated system that will separate children of different ability and send them in different directions when they leave Kozu. Keiko has her sights on one of the better senior high schools. Teachers know the form so well, they can predict which school a child has a chance of getting into. This is meant to reduce pressure and tension, but the pace still shows itself. Like every school, Kozu has a surgery. <laughs> Many of the children who come to the nurse have symptoms related to tiredness for whatever reason. In Osaka, they talk about shindoi, which roughly translates as knackered. うん、頑張ろうと思ってるわけ。うん、あんまり頑張ろう、頑張ろうもって、ここら辺にあったまりきたんじゃないかな。一応ね、ちゃんと特別あれテスト前だから勉強したりとかないな、そういうの。今までね
But people shouldn't just be respected for knowing masses of facts. After all, education should also aim to transmit culture, to come up with new ideas, and to teach people to lead a fulfilled life. The afternoon before the annual school sports day, and Kozu prepares. The broadcasting club will provide the sound system. Everything is organized meticulously. As with many school activities, it's the social experience and the cooperative effort which is stressed. There may be millions more pebbles on the surface, but the mere process of collecting them is felt to be character forming. Careful warm-up exercises start the day itself. All the staff and children participate. Sports Day is a high point of every school's year. Individual winning is played down. The main contest is between competing classes. The important thing is taking part and perseverance. The banner says, our fighting spirit will burn forever. With sports day out of the way, Keiko's early morning breakfast conversation is back to the usual topics. Saturday morning and school as usual. With six days a week and far shorter holidays, the Japanese child goes to school for 240 days of the year compared with 193 days in Britain or 180 in the United States. It adds up to an additional year of education. In international comparisons of maths and science ability, Japanese children come highest in the world. Oh, it's a 
真面目にやれよ芸に書くの With a far smaller variation between the best and the worst levels, they do work that's reckoned to be two years ahead of British children of 13. All Japanese children are taught algebra, quadratic equations, and geometry. The fact that nine out of ten children do maths till they're 18 to a level not far below A level gives Japan its highly numerate workforce. On Saturday, lessons stop at lunchtime, but activities carry on. Kendo is another of the clubs, along with badminton and table tennis. The last band club is holding its sixth meeting of the week, but its ranks are depleted. Third year children aren't allowed to take part in out of school activities for six months before their senior high school exams. Working at home, Keiko does another practice history test. And for children of all ages, Saturday afternoon is not a time for relaxation, but for even more hours at Juku. It's the peak period of the week, with some children doing a six hour stint from mid afternoon to late evening. And naturally, Keiko goes too. Children mark each other's test papers. Even in history, the questions are multiple choice with one word answers. You either know it or you don't. <laughs> the emphasis is on factual knowledge or choosing the correct interpretation, not on expressing individual opinions. Okay, who's got 100%? 90%? 80%? Just one person? 70%? 40%? Really, only 40%? Keiko doesn't know it this time. She'll have to study more to do well in her exams. At 10 on a Saturday night, Osaka mothers come to collect their exhausted children. <laughs> Even on my only day off a week, I'm not free to play, so I'm not too keen on that. Actually, I hate it, but there's nothing to be done about it. Kozu, like other schools, turns a blind eye to the Jukus. They know the children go to them, but there's nothing they can do. Like the children and parents, they're all locked into the same competitive race. Mothers stay in close touch with the schools. They're invited to a talk given to the third year on what senior high school will be like and what will be expected. You must have a clear aim in choosing a particular senior high school, whether it be an ordinary high school, or a vocational school, or whatever. If you don't, you run the risk of relaxing after the relief of being selected and slacking off. If you lead a sloppy lifestyle, not knowing when you should be studying, or when you should be doing club activities, it means you're not a good student. 
That will be even more of a problem at senior high school. So I want you to get your priorities right and achieve a balance in life. In Japan, knowledge is growing all the time. But it is important to develop your physical fitness as well, if you are to grow properly and to mature. This is why you must play a full part in club activities. But after the clubs finish, you mustn't mess around on your way home. Nor must you hang around for ages at school. That's the sort of thing I mean by not having your priorities sorted out. Well, that's just about all I have to say. It's much more difficult for fathers, themselves working six days a week, to get to the school. So there's an open day for parents held on a Sunday. Peko's father comes with her mother and they watch their daughter's class in progress. The boy who is singing a song is Sam. The boy who is singing a song is Sam. So many parents come that they overflow into the corridor. Though they push their children on the one hand, most parents are torn. I wonder if all this allows their feelings and their bodies to develop properly. I know their minds are developing, but I really wonder about their bodies and their emotional development. They should all grow together. If only they could play more and learn about a greater variety of things and make more friends. This is a time when they should be developing their feelings and enriching their humanity. But it isn't being used for that at all. And the evil effects of this on their spirits are going to show when they get older. Within Japan, there is a growing debate about the real quality of children's education and whether it crushes individuality and creativity. Its critics say the education machine turns out pliant, unassertive, uniform minds on a conveyor belt. The pressure on children has grown since the war, with the increased competition and what they call examination hell. We're on the verge of entering the 21st century, and we'll have to lead a very complicated life. And I think we should gear education towards that. The education we're providing, up to the third year of junior high, will form the real basis for that life. It's quite frantic, because the children have to take so much in during this time. As well as covering all the fundamentals, there's the question of the children's individuality, which they must discover themselves. It's good if they can know themselves by the time they reach senior high school. But I don't think it's true to say that the entrance exam system crushes individuality at all. The school year ends in March with graduation ceremonies at all the junior high schools. On important occasions, the Ministry of Education insists schools raise the flag and sing Kimi Gayo, the hymn to the Emperor, which serves as a national anthem. It's to remind them of their Japanese-ness.
Persistence, endurance, pushing on are virtues which are integral to Japanese culture and the schools reflect this. In terms of mass literacy and numeracy, the schools have served the country brilliantly. But now there's a fear that they won't produce the original scientists and thinkers Japan will need in the future. The government has launched major reform commissions, but so far, nothing's been changed. The graduation ceremony is formal. It marks the importance of the transition children are making as they move to the next rung in Japanese society. The headmaster wears a tailcoat to hand a diploma to every lever. They've come to the end of compulsory school. At this point, over half the children in Britain leave full-time education, most of them to look for work. In all Japan, it's 6%. The rest stay on at school. The few who do leave now will go to less secure jobs as delivery men or to work in very small businesses. Most production line jobs will be closed to them. Employers will say they're not the right material. But for the 94% who are going to stay on in education until they're 18, the paths divide. A quarter of them will go to senior high schools with a technical or commercial emphasis. They'll be able to learn engineering skills or a building trade while still keeping up maths and science. And they'll study computers before they go into the offices or the factories at 18. The majority of children will advance to normal academic senior high school where the grind continues for university entrance exams. 60% of all Japanese children now go to some sort of higher education, 30% to university, a figure that's risen steadily. Keiko succeeded in getting into the senior high school she was aiming for. She's leapt the first big hurdle. There'll be more juku and more pressure on the way to university. Whatever the excesses, the real accomplishment of Japan's schools is not the creation of a university elite. It's the high level of schooling it gives to the mass of ordinary children and the way it prepares them for a modern industrial society. <laughs> <laughs>